Okay. Here we go. Behind the scenes, in the know in the 920, week 13. Behind the scene. Podcast 13. All right. Do you want to do the honors of hitting the record button, or shall I? I would love it if you did those right. honors. Hello. Hello. Here we are. Podcast uh, 13. Woo. In the know in the 920. <laughs> And that tune it's just yeah just gets me every time um well how are you doing i am doing great good yeah it's just a, just us two this week yeah we uh you know we came off a long memorial day weekend mm -hmm. so it's uh you know it's a short week yep I know, I keep thinking it's a different day than it is, but yeah. yeah. I have no idea what day it is today. I'm really all for the idea of going to a four-day work week. Okay. I mean... I'm in. I, <laughs> Let me run that past my boss. <laughs> I need, I need like, um, that to be like a nationwide thing yeah. for it to work. Because nothing's open on Friday, ever. Yeah, ever. No, ever. Can't show houses on Fridays. Nothing. Can't even go to Taco Bell. Yeah. Nothing. Just, ooh, that might be rough. Yeah. Um, you've been talking about Taco Bell a lot today. I feel like you have it on your mind. Hmm. Maybe, maybe you need to go there for dinner. Nah. Mm. I actually really don't like Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Taco Bell. Um, all right. Well, let's get started. I have some fun local news and events to talk about. Okay. okay? So let's just, uh, let's do it up. In local news, Kakana's Electric City Experience. Everybody's been up in arms about this. Yeah. Okay. I've seen it on the Facebook pages, the moms group pages. People are not happy. Yeah. I've heard that local hardware stores have sold out of pitchforks at this point. <laughs> so Kakana's Electric City Experience, which obviously was always in Kakana, yeah. has moved to Manasha. Why? Well, it says it's actually uh, changed names, too, which makes sense because it can't be really the Kakana, yeah. you know, Electric City Experience when it's in Menasha. So now it's called the Fox Cities Experience. Okay. Uh, it will run June 6th, 7th, and 8th, Jefferson Park in Menasha, uh, Electric City Productions, the company behind the festival, announced the developments in a news release Friday and in a Facebook post on Saturday, according to the post Crescent. So it, this is cool, though, I think. The festival is going to feature performances from some of the best musical artists in our region. Okay. Whoa. Some of the best. Some of the best. <laughs> They're not making any claims that it's, like, the best artists? Just some of the best. <laughs> okay. In their mom's opinions. Yeah. Right? Um, great food, carnival rides, midway games, unique vendors. Okay. So that's cool. Uh, it says, this year we're adding beautiful lakefront views. Playground fun. I mean, I think it'll be cool. Oh, here's some of the performers. Cool yeah. Waters Band. Okay. Heard of them. They are yeah. they're very good. Fox Menagerie. Okay. A Town Unplugged. Okay. Iftikar. And Kyle Megna and the Monsoons. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So those are those are good. They're they're yeah. very good. So that's awesome. So you know the the company, um, Electric City Productions, is very thankful, it says, to the city of Kakana. Um, they're very grateful for the years that they've done it there. Kakana Mayor Tony P Penterman is mm -hmm. very upset about this. He says, we're disappointed. Um, apparently, the event organizers came to them as recently as early May, requesting some additional funds um, to offset sponsorships that hadn't come through. Right. So I think that's kind of where... This all just came as a big shock, right? Because it happened so quickly. Yeah, I was flabbergasted. I bet. Blown away. Yeah. I know. Because I know you pay attention to this. I'm going to be honest. Stuff. I had never heard of this festival. Okay. Well, I pay attention to this kind of thing. <laughs> and the moms in the area, they got me. We're always looking for fun things for our kids yeah. to do. Um, 
Since 2021, Kakana provided 10,000 annually for the fest. Wow. This year, Electric City Productions had asked, according to this article, for an additional $9,000. The council agreed to increase the city's contribution by 6,000. Okay. So bringing it to 16K. But attached some conditions to that. Oh. And apparently that's when uh, Electric City Productions decided to uh, move out, move out the way. That's always where the deal falls apart. It's the clauses and contingencies right there. Exactly. We know all about oh, that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, you know, kind of a change. But June 6th, 7th, and 8th, that'll be going on in uh, Jefferson Park in Menasha. So I think that'll be fun. Good activity to bring the family to. Yeah. Now, there's another festival coming up this weekend. Yes. And I feel like you have some history that surrounds that. So I'm going to let you chat about this. A little bit of history coming in here. Okay. All right, so, and we haven't done history in a little bit. I know. Um, so, June is dairy month. Okay. Well, you know, among other things, because what doesn't have a month now? That's, that's a good point. Um, so, June is dairy month, and to mark the beginning of dairy month, mm -hmm. the village of Little Shoot at Doyle Park, they always host their Cheese Fest, mm -hmm. the Great Wisconsin Cheese Festival. Um, so, that will be, you know, this this weekend for three days mm -hmm. and so the festival itself has been going on since 1988 when whoa when it got brought to um you know a local wisconsin congressperson's attention mm -hmm. that the state of new york had built a national cheese museum mm. and we said girl nah uh mm -hmm. We no, uh, yeah, will remain the cheese capital. So basically, it came down to, <laughs> you know, it almost came to fisticuffs. But what happened was we, you know, invited some uh, some New York cheesemakers to Wisconsin for you know a, a cheese off. Okay, you know? is and, there really that's what happened? Oh yeah, in 1988, you were alive for this. Wow, I, like like yeah. people were. I feel like this is something I could totally get on board with. And so. Initially, mm -hmm. Wisconsin cheese is won in every single category, mm -hmm. like across the board. Of course. And, you know, the, the mayor of this city in New York that they had the, the museum or whatever, he had come along to the festival. He was saying it's all rigged, you know, because the cheeses were easily identifiable, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So then they did blind tasting with I reporters on live TV and still Wisconsin flat out won it. Duh. So... Ever since then, we've been celebrating the history of Wisconsin just having the best cheese in the nation. That's actually really cool. Yeah. I had no idea. I just figured it was like cheese fest because it, you know, yeah. again, we are like the cheese capital, right? Yeah. That's really cool. Now I picture like a bunch of people. I kind of want to like get my hands on a, a clip of this if there is one. I from hope 1988. so. I picture like a bunch of people sitting at this big long yeah. table blindfolded. Just eating different slices of cheese, which honestly sounds like a dream come true. It does. It sounds really cool. It, it also doesn't it. sound like one of those things that somebody would just have on an old VHS tape, but it might be there. Yeah. Um, also, in celebration with Little Shoot this year, so the I won't get too much into their history right now, but the, the village of Little Shoot was incorporated in 1899, which makes this year their 125th anniversary. Ooh. So... Happy anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. Happy anniversary, Village of Little Shoot. Yeah. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's that's about all I that I'm going to give you on them right now. So, Doyle Park this Doyle weekend. Doyle Park this weekend. I think it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I believe. I believe that's the yeah. plan. It's always three days. Mm -hmm. so, so, Friday is what? June? No. Oh, goodness. So Friday is the 31st. Yeah, doing... Friday is the 31st. 31st, mm -hmm. yeah. So, Friday, May 31st. June 1st and June 2nd. I know they have all kinds of rides, games. They have cheese. Yeah. Shocking. I, you cheese. know, a couple years ago, I couldn't find any cheese there. I settled really? for a funnel cake. Yeah, it was kind of weird. Hmm. I think they, I think I just kind of went like on the last day when they sure. were out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I hope they would have some cheese yeah. uh, amongst other food items. And I know they always have bands. I can and They do hear, like cheese carving. I live in Kimberly, as you know. Yeah. Across the bridge. Yeah. I can hear the bands 
at Cheese Fest. You're a significant distance away from that. From my home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's always a great time. Seems like a good time. Yeah. So check it out this weekend, everybody. All right. Up next, I have some more local news, local real estate news All that right. I think everybody will appreciate. Sure. In local real estate news, more affordable housing is coming to the Appleton area. Praise be. I know. Which we need. We do. Very much. Severely. So, according to this article from the Post Crescent, a new workforce uh, housing development will bring 33 income restricted units to East Wisconsin Ave okay. um, in Appleton by 2026. The apartment complex will be called Archive. Okay. I don't know why, but that's the name of it. Yeah. Three stories, 40 units total, underground parking. So that's cool. Oh, fancy. Uh, community room, free Wi-Fi, and storage units for each apartment. So that's really nice. All right. Yeah. It says income-restricted units will be reserved for households with incomes at or below 30%, 50%, and 60%, respectively, of, of the, the county's median yeah. income. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which the county's median income is $78,705, to be exact. That's up a bit from the last time I heard. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good job, Well, it needs everybody. to be, it needs, <laughs> way to be successful. Yeah. It needs to be with the prices of everything, right? Um, so who will be able to live there, right? Because, I mean, seriously, if you look at, and I've had this conversation with so many people talking about real estate, you know, throughout the Fox Cities, if you look at so many apartment buildings now, it's like, holy heck what they're getting for oh, yeah. rent. Unbelievable. Yeah. Prices that I see in big cities are here now. Right. And I mean, I'm not saying we're we're not, a you know, Appleton's fairly big, but it's not Chicago. It's right. not New York, you know. Yeah, but yeah, some of the places around here, it's like, dang, that's the price of like a New York studio. Correct. My first Ooh. apartment, fun little fact, when I uh, graduated high school and decided, you know, I knew everything and moved out on my own. Yeah. Four hundred and fifty dollars a month. Okay. One bedroom. One bedroom. And it was nice. I mean, it was very standard, very basic, but yeah. it was a nice place. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Actually, I feel like, I feel like my first solo apartment wasn't much more than that either. Mm -hmm. That was only like eight years ago. I know it's gone up so much. So a lot of the newer complexes, and I'm not speaking for all of them. I don't have pricing information in front of me, yeah. but a lot of the newer complexes that I'm aware of in the Fox cities where I've looked at pricing. Um, Cause a lot of times, you know, we get people that are like, we need to rent for a little while in between selling our home and buying our new home or things like yeah. that. I've looked into a lot of them. We're looking at 1500 plus dollars a month. In a lot of cases, that's a one bedroom. Yeah. The ones downtown Appleton, uh, the Park Central, the old Park Central, yeah. or as we liked to call it, Dark Central. I don't know if I've ever seen that building open in my life. It's just always been an abandoned building to me. Now, for me, I uh, <clears throat> spent many a nights there back yeah. in the day. But um, it was really fun. It was really cool. There was like different rooms. Comment if you spent some time at Park Central because there was all, like all these different rooms and okay. like different music and different like kind of vibe in each room. Yeah. It's very interesting. But anyways, now it's these apartments, right? And literally, I think I saw one bedrooms there going for over two grand a month. <sighs> I know. Oh so it's good that we're going to have more affordable housing because that's just insane. It's nice. For, you know, the people that can afford it and want to spend that kind of money, that's wonderful. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that don't want to spend that kind of money on rent, right? Right. Um, so if you have to rent, I mean, of course, buying is always the best thing because now you're building equity. But if you have to rent for a while, I think, you know, it's nice that there's more affordable housing coming. So Archive, again, will have 40 uh, units Nine units will be reserved for those making at or less 30% of the median income. 16 units for those making 50% and eight units for 60%. Okay. There will be 13 one-bedroom units, 22-bedroom units, and seven three-bedroom units. Okay. Okay. And in the spelling of this, I just have to know. Mm -hmm. So 
is it just archive like normal spelling? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like archive yeah, history. I mm -hmm. don't know if they were doing something funky Some with funky, it. Some funky, yeah. Like R hyphen right. K I B E. <laughs> nope, just regular archive. Okay. But now again, this they won't be done until it says by 2026. So it's in the works. It's coming. It's okay. coming, people. But it's not here yet. But it's it's nice that it's in the works. Yeah. And I hope that more of that happens for people in this area. Yeah, and that time will be here before we know it. I mean, honestly, one of the best things I think about our area is, or was, you know, is affordable housing. Yeah. And obviously pricing across the board, whether you're buying or renting, has, has increased significantly. And um, I don't know. Again, it's just nice to see more options coming for people. Yeah, and I know that, you know, historically, somewhat recently at least, um, Appleton's city council has not made it super easy for low-income uh, housing situations. So we'll see. Hopefully this kind of gets a foot in the door for more of these kind of developers to do this kind of stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's needed. It's really needed. Good. Well, I'm glad that that's happening, and uh, we'll try to keep following and see if there's going to be more in the works because i know a lot of people talk to me about that and a lot of people want it and need it all right next something that you're going to be really excited about are there goats <laughs> i know how you love <laughs> you and amelia love your goats oh, yeah. the miss wisconsin pageant oh, okay is coming 30 contestants it's pretty good uh, they'll compete for the crown June 19th through the 22nd Oshkosh West High I wonder, in the auditorium. So, okay, so how do they get to the 30 contestants? Are there, like, regionals? Okay, well, let me tell you. Yeah, because I know that you know this. Mm -hmm. So, fun little fact that you are aware of, but we're going to make all of our loyal oh, yeah. followers aware of, is that I was a pageant girl back in the day. You were. I was in the Miss Appleton pageant. Um, in 1998 or nine, yeah. it was my senior year of high school. I can't remember exactly what time of the year it was, but yeah. in any case, it was in the Miss Appleton pageant. So yes, the answer to your question is there's a lot of local, like bigger cities throughout Wisconsin yeah. will organize these pageants. It is part of the Miss America organization. Okay. okay? So you got to follow certain rules and, you know, stipulations right. and guidelines and all the things. So at the time um, in Appleton, there was this really nice couple that ran it for many, many, many years. I don't think, I could be wrong, but I don't think there's currently a Miss Appleton pageant. Okay. They retired from doing it like the year after I participated uh. and nobody else ever picked it up. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So, yeah, but I'm there's a Miss Oshkosh pageant, you know, there's several throughout, right. obviously throughout the state of Wisconsin. So you go to a, a regional, you have to win the regional. Um, I did not win. No. Sad. I was the second runner up though. <laughs> <laughs> second runner up, not the winner, second yeah. loser. But you know what? I got a plate, yeah. a silver plate. Really? That said, you know, Miss Appleton, second runner up. How have I never seen this? Oh, it's beautiful. I have it in my, talk about pulling things out of the archives. I have it in um, a Rubbermaid container of memories. Oh my All my God. memories, okay. one container. Yeah. So anyways, I got that. I got some flowers. And I did get, because the, the nice thing, too, about Miss America organization is it is a scholarship pageant. Yeah. There's a lot of controversy around pageants. You know, everybody has their own opinion about them. I think the Miss America organization over the years has done a really good job of focusing more and more on talent and education and all of those kinds of things. Right. And again, it's a scholarship uh, organization. So I ended up second runner up Miss Appleton, $800. Not bad. Oh, dang. You know. For the 90s, that's not bad. For the 90s. <laughs> it was the 90s. Um, but... So then, yes, the winner of each regional now goes on and will meet in um, at Ashkosh West High. Okay. Okay. Uh, on what did I say? June nineteenth through the twenty second, and it says 
Oh, and they do a teen pageant as well. Yeah. So there's also a teen version. Like the Miss Teen. Mm -hmm. Miss America. Teen America. Yep. Yeah. So let's see. That I think is going to be really fun and interesting. Oh, listen to this. Talking about scholarships. Lila, and I'm not going to pronounce her last name. Just give me an initial. Because I'll kill it. Lila S. Okay. Okay. Um, she is currently Miss Wisconsin. She's Miss Wisconsin 2023. Congratulations, Lila. Way to go, Lila. And I'm very sorry that we don't know how to pronounce your last name. Uh, Miss Wisconsin teen is Trinity Horstman. Okay. But anyways, uh, Lila uh, is a graduate of UW-Madison. Okay. And she earned nearly $15,000 in scholarships during her time competing with the Miss America. Wow organization yeah that's awesome so again it can be you know it can be really rewarding and if you win so then if you win miss wisconsin now you go on to the miss america pageant yeah, you go to the whole shebang the whole shebang televised yeah you know the whole thing so very very cool so Dang. good luck to all of the ladies that will be competing um i you know i'm all about you know i'm all about female empowerment and i just yeah, think that get them girls yes get them girls but i do i think that the the girls that participate are very you know poised and put together and professional and well educated oh, and absolutely have great talents yeah do you um know what i did for my talent i feel like it was a dance routine it was a tap routine was it, it? was tap it was a tap routine it was tap and it was to the song i want candy which is pretty fast. Yeah. Pretty fast. And I remember it was, I mean, it was a very fast routine. Now I was young and fit and all the things, but I remember like giving it my all on that you stage. Were like a state level athlete. By the, the end I was, yeah. but by the end of that routine, I was like about to pass out. Yeah. You know? So it was real tough, real tough loss, but uh, at least I got to say that I did it. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy looking at the like national competition with the like the fifty from each state, mm -hmm. and it's like every one of these people that's on stage, like the two sentences about their life is cooler than anything I've ever done. <laughs> They're always like so amazing. <laughs> They're majoring yeah. in like six things. <laughs> right. It's like oh, I I practice zero gravity surgery so that I can be the first brain <laughs> surgeon on the moon. What? <laughs> How do you even get into that? That's amazing. No, you're right. They really do. It's crazy. They have accomplished a lot. Yeah. It's, I know when I did Miss Appleton, even, um, you kind of had to get through a series of like tryouts per se with the local organizers yeah. to even, you know, participate. Oh, they don't sense. want, they don't want like, um, you know, oh, you're you're in high school or maybe you're in your first, second year of college when you do the, the regional and, you know, you're like flunking. They're not going to probably not going to put you in there. Yeah. Yeah. So like I kick puppies in my free time. <laughs> it is uh. definitely. Listen, if you're not working towards world peace. Yeah, you're not you're not in. But good luck to all of them. I think it's really cool. Um, all right. Next. I have some national news. Okay. In national news, Target has announced that they are slashing prices. Oh. I know. Isn't that exciting? Are they doing a rollback, or are they not allowed to say that? <laughs> they can't say that. Okay. No, no, no. Um, so according to this article, again, from the Post Crescent, Target announced it's slashing prices on over 5,000 products to help customers save money. Dang. And combat inflation, yeah. So they've already reduced prices on about 1,500 items. They continue to, they're going to continue to do that throughout the summer, okay? It feels like that would be somebody's full-time job, monitoring those prices. I'm sure it yeah. is. I'm sure they have, like, a team of analysts. Yeah. And, it's just yeah. strange how they say that they're going to continue doing it, because, yeah, that's, that's probably somebody's duty. For yeah. sure, for sure. Um, so... They did, I think this is kind of fun, a little comparison okay. of their pricing, okay? So, well, actually, I'm sorry. This particular news article did 
the comparisons. Oh, sure. Okay. So they got a whole grocery list, and I'm not going to list off all the things, but a lot of a lot of items. Okay. Like a normal trip to the store. Exactly. Full grocery list. Uh, the store's total for name brand items, okay. name brand items, came to $71.42. Okay. Okay. They obviously didn't get that many things because, jeez, nowadays I feel like $71. <laughs> I know. I got I'm... like two sticks of butter and a <laughs> box of popsicles. <laughs> yeah, I can spend that at the self-checkout. Right? right? Oh. Exactly. But they did, I mean, they did get a, they did get several items. Uh, let's see. The highest price items included ground beef, which makes sense. Uh, bounty paper towels and quilted Northern. Okay. Okay. So then they compared that with Target store brand. Sure. Okay. So Target store brand, which includes Good and Gather and Market Pantry. Those are their store brand names. Yep. Proof to save customers, same items, same exact items, a little over $15. Okay? So the store brand total came to $55.32. Sure. Okay? So pretty good. Yeah. I mean, that's honestly, it's not something that I'm guilty of this. I don't pay a ton of attention to. Right. Because I'm just like, oh, whip this in my cart, boom, 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 go. Yeah. But holy crap. If you really could focus on, you know, some of the store brand things and you're okay with that, can definitely save money. And let's face it, a lot of the not name brand items, you compare the ingredients, you look, they're the right. same. They're basically the same. It's made in the same yeah. factory. Yeah. So, okay. So now here's the fun part. Speaking yeah. of rollbacks before, Walmart, right? Right. So now we're going to figure out, according to this article, which place is cheaper? Okay. Okay. Um, cause, uh, longstanding debate on this, truly. And again, probably not something, you know, you've gotten into that much at your age. But let me tell you, us parents, when you're feeding a family, mm, you got to save money on this yeah. stuff. For real. Okay. So let's just see what we have here. Uh, Walmart. Walmart. Sorry, I'm I lost my <laughs> spot. <laughs> Walmart. Um, Walmart. Good old Walmart. I just love Walmart. I'm trying to find the price. There was a price on the name brand items. Oh, okay. Got it. I found it. Here we go. Everybody's on the edge of their seats. So remember how I said that the name brand items at Target came to $71.42. Yep, remember 71, that? 42. Okay. Same exact shopping list, name brand. So same exact items at Walmart came to $67.79. Oh, snap. Saving about $3.63. Okay. Nothing that nothing that exciting, but hey, every little bit helps, right? Yeah. It's about a gallon of gas right there. Exactly. Okay. The store brand items, though, now this gets even better, for Walmart includes Great Value, which I think Great Value is a good brand, and Sam's Choice, yeah. good brand, came to a total of $48.32, saving Ooh. customers a little over $24. So that's nice. And like 7 bucks over the Target brand. Exactly. So cool. basically what we've found, we've learned two things here, I feel. Okay. Target is slashing their prices. Yeah. Thank you, Target. We love you. It also helps, I think, if you have, like, the Target Circle app and you use that, oh. you know, and then you get more discounts. But uh, thank you, Target, for slashing prices. However, if you really want to be the most economical, it looks like you need to go to Walmart and you need to purchase the store brand items yeah. to save the most money. Yeah. Now, I'd be interested to see, and maybe, maybe we'll do this. We'll do the research. We should go on a shopping trip to Walmart and then and get um, store brand items there. And yeah. then we're going to go to Aldi. I wanted to throw in Costco. Oh, gosh, like, that's going to be <laughs> like if you're planning for 100 people to be at a party. Well, that's a good one point. box from Costco. Things at Costco, I think, are more expensive. 
expensive, but you're getting them in bulk. So then you'd have to kind of divide out. Right, exactly. I don't know that I'm that good of a mathematician, but I would really like to see the comparison of Walmart versus Aldi. Okay. Stay tuned. Follow-up episode. We're going to compare. I think it'd be fun. And then we'll go to the Dollar Tree. Yeah. And then we'll go to the Dollar Tree. Yes. We'll get we'll get all the same items across the board. And uh, we'll see what, what comes out. That actually could be fun. I feel like a lot of people in this area, and I like Aldi too. Bill, my husband, loves Aldi. He raves about it. Um, you can get a lot of really good stuff there. I, I like the stuff that they have. It just kind of bothers me that I can never really find the same stuff twice when I'm there. Mm, I got well, you. I mean, there's certain staples that they have. Sure, like. sure. Yeah. I'll fall in love with a food item that they have, and then I'll never find it there again. Yeah, that is that is tough. I hear you. But I think it's going to be fun. Let's do a comparison. Let's do some research for the people, for all of our loyal followers yeah. and fans, and get that information out to the public. Okay? Um, all right. So that I just thought that was kind of exciting because who doesn't love a Target? I'm sorry. But again, <laughs> grocery prices at Walmart, store brand, best deal but who doesn't love yeah a good target shopping spree i know i do yeah. especially at super target listen ever oh super don't even get me started there's only one in wisconsin and i got to go to it recently it was cool every time i go to target just the one over in our area here on the east side of town or the one on the west side of town for that matter and i get to the checkout the, the very friendly checkout person always says to me, did you find everything that you were looking for? And my response is always, yes, plus 10 items. Yeah. You know, I don't know what it is. It just like sucks you in. Seriously. It's like, okay, I um, went to Target for dryer sheets and laundry detergent, and I left there with a mm-hmm. lamp and a new wreath my besides secret? the laundry detergent and the dryer sheets. My secret there is that I don't get a cart. It's just, if I can't carry it out, it's not coming with me. Okay. Well, that's a good secret. Yeah. I like that. So anyways, that's what I got on Target. Now, I feel like you have some interesting information to share. Yeah. I mean, so we were talking a little bit about, um, you know, summer's coming up. Summer is coming. Um, Schools are getting out. Schools are getting out. But yeah, there are a lot of students um, all over the world who you know, rely on school lunch programs, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. So um, some of the local school districts, um, the ones that I know of for sure are Appleton, Menasha, and Nina. Mm-hmm. Um, they are doing different school lunch programs during the summer where, you know, kids can go and get an actual lunch. Mm-hmm. Um, it's usually people 18 and under. Um, sure. And I think they're all free. I know they're so, free for the, kids. for the kids. For the kids. I think adults at some of the school districts yeah. can also get a lunch and pay just a little bit for it. Yeah. I mean, it's a way better deal than anywhere else you would get right. lunch from. So just so that we don't, you know, bore people to death with a right. list of this and that and a whole spreadsheet, <laughs> um, we will put that info, I guess, on our Facebook page. But I do think it's a really cool thing because, yeah, you know, there's a lot of people that they, re- they rely on the public school system sort of as their child care mm-hmm. um you know you drop your kid off and you go do your nine to five and then go pick your kid up again right but it can yeah. be challenging i mean honestly that's you bring up a good point so first of all it's the it's the food issue right, right? because there is a lot of um food insecurity yeah in this in this area everywhere but I think sometimes we just are so, you know, we're just in our own little bubble in our own little world. And there's a lot of it here. I've talked to a lot of teachers throughout the years in this area that are like, yeah, you know what? We have kids every day that are in need. Um, So I think it's great that they have that program. And again, we'll put that list on our Facebook page and we'll also put it on our moving to the Appleton area group for those of you that are on there. If you're not on there, check it out. We have a group on Facebook. You just have to request to join. It's called moving to the Appleton area. It covers all sorts of different, every day we're listing different activities that are happening throughout we the Fox City. a lot of stuff on there. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, a lot of realtors have, and I love this, have jumped in and are posting their listings in there so you can see kind of yeah. what's coming out on the market. Just all sorts of different things are on there. We've got some uh, lists on there as well 
of different like local restaurants that we recommend and different things like that. So it's fun to check that out. But anyways, the other thing that I was going to say is you're absolutely right. It, child care in the summer can be very tough for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. You know, a lot of daycares are already booked up, you know, yeah. a year in advance. Right. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. It's That's tough. tough. It really is. And like for me now, my kids, well, Jay is finally at an age where they could stay home right. for the summer. He can responsibly take care of himself. He could. He's got he a could. Telephone. He could keep him and I think his sister alive. Yeah. I think, but um, they have three thousand activities, right? And I can't afford to not work and just be yeah. their taxi service. So, shout out to our amazing uh, summer nanny Chloe, that will take them to all of their things and make their summer a delight. Yeah, you guys are just down the street from a park. What we got to do is just get a petition to get a park program going there. There you go. That would be great. Yeah, you're settled. Hey, guys. <laughs> go on over to the park for the day. <laughs> See you in eight hours. <laughs> Mom will be home around six. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, it, that is tough. And I empathize with anybody that's going through that right now because I know, I know that it's hard. Yeah. So, And I just remember, like, I mean, Mom, we love you. But I remember when I was like 12, mom would go to work and um, yeah. I would be home. And the only places that I was getting were on my bike. Oh, yeah. I think I was left home alone when I was like 10. How times like, have changed. Frequently. Yeah. How times have changed. Yeah, it's crazy. So, again, we'll post that on our website because I think it's really important. Not on our website, sorry, on Facebook. Okay, I need to tell you about this amazing restaurant that I went to the other day. Okay. And I really want to get somebody from the restaurant, maybe the owner, uh, to come and chat with us soon. Because you know I love promoting small, family-owned businesses. Sure. I kind of thought when I went into this place that it was a chain, but it, I found out that it is not a chain. Okay. It is a family-owned restaurant. So what style of restaurant is it? It is a Korean barbecue. Really? It is called Molo. Is it actually Korean barbecue? Where you get to do the barbecuing? Yeah. Oh, my God. I've been looking for one of those for years. It's amazing. Okay. So we went there the Tell other me. night. I highly recommend. Um, they have, first of all, when you walk in, they have this cute little robot that takes you to your table. Oh. She's holding the menus. You grab the menus. You sit down. Okay? Okay. So now you're at your table, and obviously there's the grill. And then there's, like, these little stations for hot pots. Yeah. So you can pick... From it's an all you can eat buffet, and you can pick to just have the barbecue, right? Or I think it was like five dollars more. You can also have the hot pot. Ooh. Now, let me tell you, the hot pot was actually my favorite part, it yeah. was stellar. So, you get to choose from like these different, you know, broths, right? I obviously chose like kind of a spicy one, okay. it was amazing. Uh, you get to choose some noodles, veggies, all sorts of things to put in there. Yeah. Just heat it up, makes an amazing soup. So that was fantastic. But then, obviously, the Korean barbecue was amazing as well. So we had several meats. Um, and then we threw in some other stuff, some grilled shrimp. Yum. I mean, it was, yeah, I had some pineapple we grilled, just all sorts of stuff. Put it over some uh, rice. It was amazing. So I highly recommend going to Molo. I think, too, it's just a fun experience. So where is this? Okay, it is 1170 Northwest Hill Boulevard. So oh, over on the west side of town. Sure. Mm -hmm. And it's just really, really amazing. Monday through Thursday, they're open noon to 9.30. Friday and Saturday, noon to 10. And Sunday, noon to 9.30 again. And they were, everybody was so nice. The owner was there. She welcomed us. You know, just very friendly, very nice atmosphere. And that was great, too, because I always get really, like, my social anxiety is, is crazy. As much as I can do this kind of stuff, my yeah. social anxiety in certain situations is insane. And whenever I'm going somewhere new, it's like, okay, where do I park? Well, I mean, there the parking was easy. It's a parking lot. But you know what I mean. I'm just saying, where do I park? Where do I go in? How do, what do I say? What do I do? And this place has a lot of that. Like, is there a hostess? Do I have to seat myself? Correct. Yeah. What do I order? How do I order? What's appropriate? All the things. And the servers were just really, really great, really helpful about the whole experience. And I honestly can't wait to go back. Okay. I want to go right now. Well... All right. See you, everybody. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Um, no, but uh, it's really good. So I highly recommend, and hopefully we can talk to them at some point. Now, 
Lastly. Yep. The final. The final. I have some fun weekend events. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, opening day of the Farmer's Market. Oh, in downtown Appleton. Downtown College Ave. I love the Farmer's yeah, Market. Just I don't forget it. to move your car if you park overnight mm. because that's an expensive tow. <laughs> that's never happened, has it? Uh, it happened to one of my friends. <laughs> uh, yeah, he got towed mm. on like a Friday night or whatever, and it was mm. like 400 bucks. Yes. So don't do that. No. Now, hold on, though. Better to leave your car and get it towed if need be, if absolutely need be. Oh, yeah. But as a headsy upsy, just maybe park in uh, one of the parking Parking ramps. ramps. Park in a ramp if you're going to drive and then leave your car overnight and go back to the ramp. Because, yes, the farmer's market will be happening (laughs) every uh, Saturday morning now, downtown Appleton. And it's always a great time. Good deals. It looks amazing. Now, going back to Target and how much stuff I can get at Target, same thing with the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. I go there with not not a thought in sight of what I want and it's like oh these flowers are beautiful I need these yeah. oh I need these the flowers are the big one I need these onions oh these you know potatoes look fantastic I gotta get this I got I just I end up walking yeah. away with all of these things and then you know Tori my daughter always any any shopping opportunity she takes it up and she's not going to go shopping and not get something right right so then she'll leave there with like a cute little ring or a craft or i mean it's just but anyways farmer's market uh starts this saturday june 1st 8 a.m till noon downtown college ave okay again just a reminder cheese fest is happening yep so again we figured this out may 31st through june 2nd at doyle park in little shoot uh admission friday and saturday five dollars for adults um and let's see, three dollars for kids ages four to twelve. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but all of the proceeds that they make, um, they actually go towards redoing the park and all of their, you know, public works and stuff. And that's shoes. nice. It actually does go directly back into. I like that. The, the area. That's actually really great. Yeah. Sunday admission is free. Uh, let's see. They also have a ten thirty Saturday. The Big Cheese Parade Ooh. and the Cheddar Chase. Oh, the Cheddar Chase. That's always a good one. Man, what am I going to do? Am I going to be at the Farmer's Market? Am I going to go to the Big Cheese Parade? I don't know, if honestly. If you're up early enough, you could do both. I could. I could knock a lot of things out on Saturday morning. The parade travels down Main Street from the Sanatorium to Grand Avenue. And then Cheddar Chase is a family-oriented one-mile walk run just before the parade. Okay. It's kind of like the Santa Scamper yeah. in the Christmas Parade downtown. It's a short little Except one. it's yeah. the Cheddar Chase. Okay. Um, now here's another one that I really want to do on Saturday. There's a lot of fun things happening in the Fox okay. cities, vintage on the Fox. Yeah. I've heard you talking about mm-hmm. that a couple times. I'm excited. Week. Hosted by revival lane, Saturday, June 1st, uh, 10 to five, 101 West Edison Ave Suite 130. Edison. I love that area. Yeah. I love it. It's great. Um, one of my favorite restaurants is over there. And of course the name is escaping me right now. Starts with an E. Eleanor. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Heard great things about that we place. We love Eleanor. That's yeah. another small family business that we need to talk to at some point. They're yeah. amazing. So, cute area. I think it's going to have so many cute things. It says, shop the Valley's best vintage furniture, clothing, and more. Dozens of vendors, food trucks. Um, they are giving away a genuine vintage electric fireplace to one lucky shopper. Huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can get more details at vintageonthefox.com. So I think I'm going to go to the farmer's market and then run over to the cheddar chase. No, that's too much. I'm going to go to the farmer's market and I'm going to go to the vintage on the fox. Okay. Okay. I'll check out Cheese Fest for you. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Listen to this grand opening. My kids are excited about this grand opening of scoop and roll ice cream. Yum. Scoop and roll. Uh, Sunday, June 2nd, 11 a.m. till 6 p.m. It says, join us for our grand opening. We're so excited to be offering over 60 flavors of premium bliss artisan ice cream, homemade waffle cones, yum. Yes. All this talk about food, bubble waffles, rolled ice cream, and Lotus Energy drinks with or without caffeine. Kind of cool, hey? So scoop and roll. It is located at N162 Eisenhower Drive. Sweet 750. So, so Eisenhower Drive. Just over 
very close that's, to very close to where is? we are. Or was? I think that's yes, yeah. right over in that area where Freshy was. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, scoop and roll. I think that's going to be a, a hot spot. Okay, next spring farm breakfast at Cuff Farms this Saturday, June first, eight thirty to eleven thirty. Cuff Farms is located at N twenty two ninety nine Ledge Hill Road in Hortonville. Yep. It says enjoy a morning on the farm eating a farm grown breakfast. Uh, they're going to gather outside, cook breakfast over a fire on their large skillet. Again, this is making me so hungry. Serving eggs, meat, asparagus, pancakes with their homemade maple syrup and homemade donuts. <sighs> we should start with the food stuff next time. I agree. Uh, let's see. Cuffarms.com to get tickets. You have to get tickets. Okay. Oh. Okay. It says it's twelve dollars ages three to twelve. Okay. Uh, under three is free. Okay, so twelve dollars ages three to twelve, twenty-seven dollars ages thirteen and up. Oh my. Okay, but I mean you get a lot for that, and you get a really fun experience. So that's this Saturday, eight thirty to eleven thirty, Cuff Farms. Again, check out cufffarms.com for all the info and to register. Cool. Last thing that I've got here, uh, we went to this a couple of years ago. Tori's out of this phase now, but yeah. T-Rats, the good old timber rattlers. That's okay. a bussin' bussin'. Cool. Bussin' bussin'. T-Rats, Saturday, June 1st at 6.40 p.m. That's a very, like, specific time. Yeah. I guess that is when they start a lot of their games, isn't it? So that's, yeah, that's usually, like, first pitch time, but then they factor in, like, national anthem and that kind of stuff. Okay. So that's why it's a weird start. Very nice. So Princess Night with a VIP tea party. Cool. I'll see you there. Uh, Let's see. Join as they welcome royalty to the ballpark. You get to say hi and take pictures with your favorite princesses. The Princess VIP ticket package is $33. That includes a box seat ticket pre-game VIP tea party with snacks and beverages from 3.45 to 5. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Guaranteed meet and greet with the princesses and sing-along performance with the princesses. Now, you don't, from what I recall anyways, yeah. when we did it, we didn't do all of that. We just went, got tickets to the game, but we, Tori still got to meet and say hello to the princesses and get pictures. So I think you can just do that option as well. Okay. okay? So I think a lot of people will be there. Cool. Do you I think, think it's going to uh, be a really Kate fun Middleton weekend. Will be there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yes. All, all of the favorite princes. All of the royalty yeah. will be there. Yes, yeah, cool. absolutely. Well, yeah, speaking of royalty, yeah, mm-hmm. and you did mention Tori. Oh, her Queen, birthday's coming up. Queen Victoria, so as I call her. By the time our next podcast releases, she will be a year older. She will be. She's going to be nine. Nine. It's your last year of having a child who's single digit age. Wow. Thank you. That really yeah, makes you're welcome. me feel old. Holy cow. But yes, big, big, big happy birthday to the joy of my life. She is just, when I had a girl, everything that I ever wanted <laughs> in, a, in a girl. I mean, she's yeah. just my little dancer and my little performer and yeah. she's so fun. So we love you. Happy, happy birthday. And we love you all. Thanks for tuning in following us please share with your friends we need more we need more we need more followers if you like the if you're listening to this on podcast um on podcast on spotify um give us a five-star review if you don't mind yeah because then that boosts our ratings as well we want to get this out to as many people as we can because we want to keep you know kind of being your local source for Real estate information, local news, local events, all the fun things. And if you're listening on YouTube, put this on 2x speed. Repeat it while you're sleeping just to get our plays up a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Very, very good. Hack the system. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks, Nick. Anything else you wanted to share? No, that's it for me this week. Okay, that's it for me as well. I hope everybody has a fantastic and fun weekend. Enjoy. Hopefully we have great weather. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To contact the Kelly Davies Homes team for all of your buying and selling needs, call 920-791-9047. Find us on Facebook at the Kelly Davies Homes team or go to kellydavieshomes.com.
clear. All clear. Alright, let's be 